day there viewers my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. I'm a gem cutter and I live in southern Australia in the state of Victoria and today I'll be featuring topaz that comes from Australia but a lot further from where I live. It's actually found at Mount Surprise in Queensland Australia. A warm welcome to all my regular subscribers and viewers. Many of you watch my channel for different reasons it's really nice to have you back again and join me in this episode and I would also like to welcome any new subscriber or new viewer that's accidentally stumbled upon my channel I think you'll be pleasantly surprised in the process of how a gem is cut I know that this episode will not answer all your questions so you may need to see some previous episodes but I'm certainly glad that you can join me so for those people who've been watching my channel for some time now you may have realized by now that Topaz is my all-time favorite gem to facet and that would be followed by Zircon and Sapphire. Topaz is a gem cutter's dream and often quartz is recommended but Topaz cuts easier, it polishes easier, yeah sure it has a cleavage plane but the chances of striking that cleavage plane when faceting would be pretty rare. I would encourage any beginner to start fastening with topaz. So in today's video I will be featuring what I would consider to be an old fashioned design. It comes out of a very old book that I have. It's called the Zircon Cup and you can see it here in this 3D generated computer graphic. So let's go through the design sequence. We have the virtual 3D preform which is attached to the virtual 3D DOP and we'll be cutting 16 break facets. After we've completed the 16 break facets, the next set of facets will be the girdle facets and they will align and meet with the break facets. Once this is completed we cut 8 facets, they become the main facets, they will meet the girdle. And finally we have 16 culet facets, these will be quite intricate and you have to be careful not to overcut these. Onto the crown. The crown starts off similar to the pavilion where we cut 16 break facets down to depth and this will be creating the girdle thickness and the girdle outline as you can see here. This will be followed by another 8 facets that meet the girdle and then the last facets will be the star facets. So the crown will have a fairly high profile but it is very similar if not the same as a standard round brilliant and then the table is cut finally. So there we have it. So I'll be cutting this particular gem on a 64 index. So here are the sequences for the index settings if anyone wishes to cut this particular design. So you can just pause and then you can write all this down. So it's the following day and I've glued a dop stick onto the gem. I didn't preform this gem, just glued it straight on. I'm not showing you the whole process of the transfer. You'll see that in other videos if you wish to check that out. I thought that the Zircon cut for many of you who facet gems or those people who simply enjoy gems or buying gems that it would introduce you to just a different alternative to the standard round brilliant. So obviously the standard round brilliant is one of the most common gem designs you'll see in the gem world. Whether you've seen it faceted or whether you've bought it yourself it's usually the first gem that most beginners learn to cut and also it's probably the most common gem that you'll probably see on YouTube being cut. It's almost ad nauseum with the amount of YouTube videos where you'll see this particular design. So the Zircon cut will offer a unique challenge for those gem cutters who've been faceting the standard round brilliant for some time. Those extra 16 culette facets are quite intricate so you need to be careful you do not overcut. If you happen to be someone who just loves buying gems or has an interest in gems in general, the dispersion of the Zircon cup will be a lot different also as you have those 16 QLED facets reflecting back onto a smaller table. So 
So I've just rounded out the topaz. This is not a necessity. You don't need to do this. You can go straight into cutting the pavilion facets and then cut the girdle. But I like to do this. It gives me an idea of the size of the gem. And also I do need to remove that inclusion at the base. So while I'm getting ready to facet the first set of pavilion facets, I thought I would mention that my next video will be about some gems that a gentleman from Queensland sent me. His name is Tim and he has a sapphire mine. He's an independent miner and just a lovely guy. He's got his own YouTube channel and I'm going to actually drop in a link to his YouTube channel. Please watch some of his videos, like and subscribe. I think if you're really into gems or cutting gems, I think you will find it extremely fascinating when you see some of these videos that he uploads. Anyway, I'll talk more about Tim in my next video and I'll decide on what type of gems I'll facet for the next video. I haven't kind of worked out what I'll do because he sent me several different gems, so um, just stand by for that one. So here you can see that I've cut the first set of pavilion facets. I've used a metal diamond bonded lap and I use a 600 grit. I don't want to go too heavy. This is not a huge gem. Also you can see that there is a chip near the culette and that was caused because there was an inclusion right near the end of that culette as I was cutting it. But that will be removed when I cut the main facets. So we're on to the second half of faceting this particular gem and once again as you've probably seen in many of my other videos this is the section where I need to transfer the dop. I glue a dop stick onto the gem and then later on remove it by heat. So then after this is completed I will put this dop stick back into the quill of my fastening machine, 
set the protractor angle as you can see now and then commence faceting the next 16 facets forming the girdle outline cutting that down to depth. So while I'm setting up to cut the next 16 facets of the crown I thought I would just answer a couple of questions that people and subscribers ask me quite regularly and these two questions are do I sell my gems and do I do commissions? And the answer to both questions is no. For me, faceting or gem cutting is a recreational activity. I do it as a hobby. I find it challenging, but mostly I do it because it's fun. And because I still work full time where I have my own business, where I've been self-employed for over 20 years, I find that mostly at night, faceting just offers an other outlet in life. So I've pretty much given up watching television at night time because TV in Australia with the reality TV shows has been so boring and mundane for over a decade and faceting really fills in that time and not only that it's not a wasted time because I'm learning something. One of the other aspects I really enjoy about faceting is trying to create new products and test different things that other faceters are not willing to try out. I'm always looking for a different way so it's more affordable for people because faceting can become an expensive hobby and that's why I'm always using products that are relatively cheap but do the job and in my opinion create a gem that's a very high standard. It's one of the reasons why I like to make these YouTube videos so people can learn how to facet and it can be affordable and enjoyable and an interesting pastime and also I enjoy making these YouTube videos because they're fun also to make. So here I'm polishing the crown of the topaz, I've decided to use my tin lap and I did that for the rest of the pavilion facets apart from the girdle. It was a lot quicker to use a tin lap using the Herco oil and 50,000 grit diamond compound. So in the following scenes you'll see that the crown is completely polished as you can see here. So this means we're getting closer to the end of another one of my videos. But before I finish up, I would personally like to thank two gentlemen that have sent me some gems as gifts. And this is Tim from Queensland, Australia and John from the USA. So hopefully if all goes well, these gems will be featured in the next couple of videos that I upload. Also in some other future videos, I have ideas of cutting some unusual gems that haven't been seen. Also Jaws will be featured in a theme video and I'm coming up with a particular idea for that. So in closing, once again I would like to thank all my subscribers for taking the time to watch my videos. Thank you for all your comments. And now we have the final reveal. It's bye for now. Take care everybody.